The following video will demonstrate the removal of a collet and the cleaning of the inside taper of the router. All right, we're going to be removing the router. We'll be removing the the collet nut with a spanner wrench and a crescent wrench for this part of the router. And be careful because the router is on a uh, non-stable surface, so you want to make sure that this doesn't move and fall. And also make sure that the router is unplugged and turned off. Now take out the end mill and um, there's a ring inside of the collet. You have to snap it out from one. You have to push it um, or angle it and then snap it out on the other side. This is the taper of the, the router. And what we're going to do is we're going to take some um, cleaner and, and we're going to clean the inside of this taper, making sure that, we're, um, and we're also going to turn the router on at the same time while we're doing this, but we're going to be using, we're going to be using these Q-tips here and this cleaning solution. First, what we're going to do is we're going to clean up the, uh, the outside threads of this so it doesn't have any uh, binding or, or any effect on the, uh, the nut, the placement of the nut. Okay, we're just going to try to get as much debris as we can off of the off of the threading. We're not going to be using any collet care for this process. We're only going to be using it for the inside bore or taper of the um, of the router. Okay, that's pretty good. Okay, now we want to turn the router on to about 10,000 RPM. On this particular router, it's the lowest setting. Okay, we're going to keep it in this position. It's going to when you first start it up, it's gonna it's gonna provide a lot of force in one direction. So you have to be careful with it being on this. If it's on a better surface, it's probably better to have it on a on a table or or another surface, or even inside the actual mount and doing it from underneath. But for demonstration purposes, we're gonna do it this way so um, it can be viewed much better. Use gloves when you're doing this, and we're gonna take we're gonna put four to five drops on a Q-tip, no more than that, for the first cleaning process. We'll be repeating this as uh, many times as it takes to get it to get the inner bore clean. You got it. Okay. Now we're going to turn on the the router, making sure it's plugged in first. Okay. So I'll, I'll start start the router. Up. It is extremely important to use gloves that are very tight on the skin, so it doesn't draw the router will not draw the glove in and draw your fingers into the bore. Um, that would be a very big mistake. You don't want to put your fingers into the bore. This is the bore. You don't want to put your fingers anywhere near this bore. You only want to put the, the Q-tip um, at, the, at the bore. And the process we're going to use is we're going to put the Q-tip all the way to the end and then go against the side and draw the, um, the debris out. Okay, you can see that the um, it was pretty dirty inside, but you want to keep doing this process until you have a clean Q-tip, where it would look something like this, but a little, maybe a little tiny bit of discoloration. But um, this is, you know, you want to just keep doing, you want to draw, go all the way in, draw it out with the solution, and do that process over and over until you get it clean. Okay.
even though this is a relatively new router, um, we've been using it for quite a while, um, for probably about a month now, you can see that there is a little bit of rust in there, there's a little bit of, um, still a little bit of uh, discoloration. Uh, doing this weekly, uh, you will be able to get this um, very, very clean. And doing this is ex extremely important because what it does is it um, allows your tool to be, or your end mill, to last a lot longer. It reduces the TIR, which is the total indicated runout. A runout is when the the bit will do do this while it's turning, and um, by cleaning this, you'll you'll make the bit turn more of a in more of a, a straight fashion, so it won't damage the bit as much. And um, we can do this cleaning probably a couple more times and get a little little cleaner. But do this uh, on a weekly basis, and over time, it'll become very 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 clean and um, have a glassy finish. So this is the beginning of our um, our cleaning cycle. You can see that it was uh, very, very dirty. Um, it has a lot of debris and, and uh, rust on it. This is our second, right here and here. You got it, from the first process, you can see it got quite a bit cleaner. And then we've got it um, on the, this is one, two, three, the fourth cleaning cycle. Got a little bit more debris, and then this is the last, where it's uh, relatively clean. But it still has some debris in it, and doing this weekly, we'll, we'll be able to get it um, very, very clean. Two. Put the uh, collet back into the collet nut. You have to put it in at an angle. So go ahead and um, do it. Okay, and then push down. To take it out, you use your thumb or, or your index finger and push it to one side and then you push it out. And there's the ring inside of there that it connects to. So you can, um, you have to do it in, on an angle, which is much easier. You can't, it's not um, good to put it in, put it straight in and try to force it in. All right, well, let's go ahead and put this on, on the, the router. Okay, and then go ahead and put in the new bit. And you want to try to put the bit in as far as you can without um, having too much of the shank show. Uh, but you want enough of the flutes out. And uh, the imp importance in this is to make sure that um, this isn't going to be flexing too much. I mean, the longer the bit, the uh, the more um, deflection you're going to have at the, at the end. All right, I'm going to show the proper way to remove a collet nut and to tighten a collet nut. Um, you can use these reference points. I generally uh, take this ref reference point and I uh, take one side of the, the wrench, the spanner wrench, and use that position to fit the spanner wrench all the way around. You can see that the spanner wrench will only fit in certain orientations. It'll fit in this orientation and it still uses this reference on this side. I generally do it this way. Do it however you're comfortable. And what we're going to do is we're going to loosen the um, the collet nut and the spanner wrench is going to go in this direction and to do this you want to use the uh, spanner wrench in a way that you can on you only need one hand to to loosen it so um, so as not to uh, I'll show you the other way if you loosen it in another in another way like trying to loosen it this way um, once it pops loose your are your hands are going to have a lot of uh, potential energy in it and then it's going to um, it's going to make your hand go uh, go very fast in, in one direction and potentially damaging your hand or um, or breaking your hand. It's best just to use one hand and they're just going to come together. And that's done. To tighten it, you can do it the same way. Just reposition the, the crescent wrench like this. So um, the spanner wrench is going in this direction and you can just squeeze these two to get it tight. And it's tight. You notice the removal of the... Um, the router was pretty simple. All you're doing is you're you're loosening this just slightly, and you're positioning these um, dimples here of the router. These are actually used as reference points to um, to screw on the the base of the router. But um, and generally these things kind of get in your way. But um, these cutouts here, this this cutout, this cutout, uh, this space, and this cutout make way for these these points. So we're just gonna find those points. Take the router all the way through. And you can turn it any way that you feel that this wire is going to be um, have ample uh, ample room to move. And then you take the then you take your screwdriver and just tighten these. I wouldn't tighten these too much. Just tighten it to a, a snug fit. Because you you still even though this is wood, it can put a little bit of pressure on the motor housing, and you don't want to do that. So just get it snug, and the motor is not going anywhere. Okay.